Hello, everyone. Today, I will bring you a recap of a lesser-known suspense thriller, Monolith. Ella, a paranormal streamer, gets all kinds of strange leads every day. But today, she received an email that completely confused her. It was an anonymous email with the subject line, The Truth Will Out, and included the name of a woman, Flora May. What caught Ella's attention was the strange word brick next to Florami's name, along with a phone number. She tried replying to the email, but it wouldn't go through. Ella felt puzzled, so she opened the email again. This time, she noticed an attachment. When she clicked on it, she saw a photo of a young girl. Driven by curiosity, she dialed the number. The person on the other end was indeed named Flora May. When Ella brought up the email and the word brick, Flora May went silent for a moment and asked who sent the email. When Ella explained it was anonymous, Flora May seemed reluctant to talk further. However, after some persuasion, Flora May finally opened up. Flora May explained that the brick had changed her life, and she didn't want to talk about it anymore. Ella insisted that sharing her story could help others, asking for just five minutes of her time. Reluctantly, Flora May began to explain. Twenty years ago, she worked as a nanny for a kind and wealthy family. They even paid for their daughter to attend an elite school, and Flora May was deeply grateful. But then something strange happened. One day, deep scratches appeared all over the family's furniture, as if made by a sharp knife or claws. Even worse, the family blamed their daughter, Paula, for the damage. Paula swore it wasn't her. Ella asked, if it wasn't your daughter, who could it have been? Flora May said she had no idea. But at that moment, she received a mysterious black brick. Ella quickly asked what the brick looked like. Flora May said it was the darkest thing she'd ever seen, darker than anything else she'd encountered. The wealthy family took the brick from Flora May without her permission and sold it, believing the money from the sale could cover part of the damage. Ella immediately asked who bought it. Flora May said it was an art collector named Klaus. Suddenly, Flora May became very upset. She told Ella that the family had no right to sell the brick, and they later fired her. Since then, she hasn't seen the black brick again. Just as Ella was about to ask more questions, there was a sudden noise on the other end of the line Florami's daughter Paula had arrived. Without saying much, Paula told Ella to stay away from her mother and hung up. As a paranormal blogger, Ella wasn't about to let this strange case go. She quickly found Klaus's information online. After introducing herself, she started asking about the black brick, clarifying that she just wanted to confirm this wasn't some prank. To her surprise, Klaus quickly confirmed that the story was true. He owned black bricks, and there were more black bricks worldwide. Ella quickly asked for more details. Klaus explained that the object was about the size of a regular brick, but it was blacker than anything else. It wasn't man-made, and the surface didn't seem natural, either. A few years ago, he had a friend do a 3D scan of the brick, and they found that hundreds of symbols were folded inside each one. When Ella asked what the symbols meant, Klaus told her that no one had yet been able to decipher them. However, one of the symbols reminded Klaus of a scar on his body, an exact match. The scar had been there since he was a child. At that moment, Klaus felt like the brick was trying to communicate with him. Ella was confused. How could something like that happen? Klaus went on to say that he thought he was losing his mind at the time, but he was the only one who knew about the connection between the black brick and reality. Klaus then shared a dream he had never told anyone. In the dream, a terrifying creature entered his bathroom. Its face looked swollen like a loaf of bread, but Klaus believed it was his brother. The creature stood by the bathtub and said, I know everything. Curious, Ella asked, know what? Klaus explained that it had to do with his brother's death. His brother had always been better than him, and deep down, Klaus had wished for his brother to disappear. Eventually, his brother died of a heart attack. Klaus thought the creature was referring to his dark thoughts. After that, Klaus locked the black brick away in his storage room. Even so, Ella found it hard to believe and tried comforting Klaus, saying these were coincidences. Klaus replied that he used to be an atheist, but his beliefs had changed since he possessed the black brick. He added that Ella might not believe him, but whenever he picked up the brick, he felt like someone from far away was communicating with him, perhaps it was some alien connection. Klaus even offered to sell Ella one of the black bricks if she was interested. Ella became even more suspicious. Was Klaus making up this story about aliens to sell the brick? After hanging up, Ella created a new folder for this case and posted the details on her blog. A few days later, something unexpected happened, and Ella started receiving emails from others who had also gotten black bricks. Some claimed it was alien technology, while others were convinced the strange phenomena were real. These messages only made Ella more confused. One woman told Ella she had received a black brick two years ago. Ella immediately asked if she knew Klaus or Flora May, but the woman said she had never heard of either. 
Ella asked the woman to share her story. The woman explained that she received a black brick as a financial advisor two years ago. She found the place empty when she brought it to her office. She could only hear the howling wind in her room, but the office windows were shut. She had no idea what was happening, and then everything went black as she passed out. When she woke up, everything was back to normal. She didn't dare tell anyone about the incident until she saw the post about the black brick on Ella's blog. At that moment, the black brick was sitting right before her. Ella asked her to send a photo of the brick and inquired if she had ever tried to destroy it. The woman said it was impossible to destroy, whenever she picked it up, she felt some force was stopping her from doing so. The woman then suddenly changed her tone, saying that there were things she couldn't reveal. She quickly hung up the phone but sent a picture of the black brick shortly after. The black brick was indeed darker than anything Ella had ever seen, piquing her curiosity even more. She organized all the clues and marked locations on a map. As time went on, more and more people began contacting Ella. Theories about the origin of black bricks varied widely. Some people even threatened Ella, demanding she delete all information about the black bricks immediately, and some warned that some civilization was destined to end. These unsettling comments left Ella confused, but she still called each person and recorded their conversations. One man told her that his grandfather had received a black brick. His grandfather had an affair in the past and fathered a child with another woman, but they broke up under family pressure. A few months ago, the man found his grandfather sitting alone in a restaurant, looking terrified and repeatedly saying, I'm sorry. He also said that a little boy appeared at dinner every night for several weeks, but only his grandfather could see him. The grandfather was convinced that the boy was his illegitimate child coming to find him. A few days ago, the boy disappeared but the black brick in the house vanished, too. Afterward, the grandfather's personality changed dramatically, and his eyes became hollow, as if his soul had left. Soon, the man's father began showing similar symptoms. The man was terrified that this mysterious condition might be some invasion and feared he would be the next target. He urged Ella to delete her blog to prevent others from getting involved with the black brick and warned that Ella herself might be in danger. However, Ella didn't believe him. She thought it might be a case of mass hysteria. As she began researching similar symptoms, she came across an old report by a journalist named Shiloh from 1988. Curious, Ella found Shiloh's information online and emailed her, hoping to learn more about the case from then. That night, Ella received a scan of the black brick interior from Klaus. The images showed many strange symbols, just as Klaus had described. These symbols didn't belong to any known language. While Ella was stunned by the discovery, a massive, terrifying black cube briefly appeared in the sky above her house, but she didn't notice it and continued her investigation, unaware of its presence. While Ella was showering in the evening, she suddenly heard the doorbell ring. Alarmed, she turned off the shower, grabbed a baseball bat, and cautiously approached the door. She looked through the glass but saw no one. Opening the door, she called out, Hello, but there was no response. Then, she glanced down and noticed a package on the ground. Ella suspected it might be related to the black brick, but when she opened the package, she found only a USB drive inside. The drive contained a single video recording of her ninth birthday party. She was puzzled until, in the video, her father mentioned gifting her a black brick as a birthday present. The video cut off abruptly at that moment. Ella immediately called her father, but there was no answer. She left him a message, informing him about the mysterious package. After the call, she looked at the shredded paper inside the package. When she pieced it together, she realized it formed a symbol that matched the one in the black brick. A wave of fear washed over her. Ella quickly thought this might be Klaus's prank, so she called him. However, Klaus denied any involvement. Ella accused him of acquiring the black bricks through illegal means and threatened to report him if he didn't tell the truth. Klaus quickly hung up. Confused by the situation, Ella received another video call from Klaus. He said he was in his collection room. He had spent his life collecting dozens of black bricks, but that wasn't the important part. What mattered now was that he felt his brother was in the room with him. Ella immediately noticed something off about Klaus's voice, but he seemed unaware. He kept talking, saying only he could hear his brother's voice. At that point, Ella could only see Klaus's feet in the video, and his voice grew increasingly strange. Ella asked Klaus what he was doing, but the call was suddenly disconnected. She tried calling him back, but his phone was no longer reachable. Ella quickly processed the recorded audio, analyzed every sound wave, and uploaded the processed file to her blog. That night, she fell asleep in front of her computer. The next morning, she was woken up by a phone call. On the other end of the line was Shiloh, the journalist who had reported on the mass hysteria case. Ella was instantly excited. Shiloh told her that she used to be a frontline investigative reporter and had a friend working in a top-secret research department, which allowed her to access exclusive information. One day, after drinking, her friend confided in her that their team was conducting a neurological study. When Shiloh heard the details, she felt like she was losing her mind.
mind. Her friend explained that anyone infected with the condition would develop hysteria symptoms just by discussing that thing. They suspected it was some virus transmitted through sound, possibly engineered by the Russians. Shiloh's friend died shortly after being involved in the research, but Shiloh hadn't given it much thought at the time. However, after coming across Ella's blog a few days ago, she felt compelled to warn Ella to be cautious. On the other hand, Ella declared that if it were all true, she would publicize the information. After hanging up, Ella started organizing all the clues and suddenly realized everything had started with that anonymous email. She tried searching for the name from the email online and discovered it came from Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice. Coincidentally, she had that book. She quickly found the book and started flipping through it. Suddenly, she discovered Florami's initials on the corner, and a realization struck her. She reopened the birthday video and, to her horror, saw that the person filming the party had been Florame all along. Ella felt a chill running down her spine. Florame had once said she worked as a nanny for a wealthy family, and that family turned out to be Ella's. She suddenly remembered her childhood and pulled out Florami's portrait to confirm it was indeed her. Ella hurriedly called Florame again and directly asked if she was seeking revenge for being fired years ago. Florame was confused until Ella explained explained further, at which point Florame realized that the wealthy family she used to work for was Ella's. Ella, growing more agitated, demanded to know what Florame wanted. At that moment, Florame's daughter, Paula, grabbed the phone. Ella asked her what she wanted and said that past events had nothing to do with her. Paula responded, no, and that incident changed my life. She continued, I'm much better than you, and your parents like me more. You did that terrible thing out of jealousy to get their attention, didn't you? Ella, however, said she couldn't remember doing anything wrong but but told Paula to stop whatever she was doing now. Paula was silent for a moment, then said she didn't know how to explain it to Ella but just hoped they would never see each other again. Ella immediately contacted her father and questioned him about taking Florami's black brick. Her father sighed and explained that he had found the black brick on her birthday, thinking it was her gift, and didn't realize it belonged to Florame. Ella pressed her father on why Florame had been fired. Her father explained that it was because Florami's child had scratched the family's furniture with a knife. Ella asked why she had never known about this, and her father replied that it was Ella herself who had told them about the incident, but she was probably too young to remember. To her shock, Ella realized the situation had come full circle. Her father's words triggered a memory of the events she had scratched the furniture herself. The image began to appear vividly in her mind. Her father urged her to drop the matter, saying it was long over. Her father didn't know that Ella had recorded the entire conversation. After hanging up, Ella lifted the tablecloth and saw that the scratch marks on the table were identical to the mysterious symbols inside the black brick. At that moment, Ella panicked. She tried to find differences between the scratch marks and the symbols in the black brick, but she couldn't. After a long hesitation, she deleted the recording of her conversation with her father. Just then, she was struck by a sharp pain in her abdomen. She rushed to the sink, trying to alleviate the pain, but felt as if something was trying to come out of her body. She could barely breathe and collapsed to the floor, clawing at her mouth in desperation. To her horror, she pulled a long black brick out of her mouth. Ella stared at the black brick for a long time, still unable to calm down. What on earth was happening? Suddenly remembering something, she quickly fled the bathroom. When she returned, she was holding a hammer. With one swing after another, she smashed the black brick into small pieces. Afterward, she wandered back to the table where the scanned image of the black brick was displayed. But suddenly, a strange sound came from the bathroom. Ella hurried to check and found something terrifying, another version of herself standing where the black brick had been. A chill ran down her spine as her eyes widened in fear, and she tried to leave. But suddenly, something clicked in her mind, and she grabbed her voice recorder. When she looked up, the other version of herself was already standing before her. Ella tried to greet her, but the other did not respond. Ella cautiously sat on a chair, and the other did the same. Trembling, Ella turned on the voice recorder, trying to remain calm as she asked what the other was and what it wanted from her. But the other Ella picked up the recorder and, under Ella's horrified gaze, crushed it with her hand. Overcome with fear, she rushed to open the door and flee the room, with the other Ella slowly following behind. Ella ran desperately until she reached a lakeside, where she collapsed weakly against a tree. Looking back, she saw the other Ella had caught up. Terrified, she backed away, but the other Ella reached out and touched her face. Ella asked if she intended to harm her, but to her shock, the other merely repeated her words. Suddenly, Ella lunged at the other, trying to escape. She climbed on top of her double, attempting to overpower her. Unexpectedly, the other fought back just as fiercely, and the two engaged in a violent 
struggle until one Ella finally managed to choke the other. After a long battle, one Ella picked up a pile of stones and carefully placed them on the other Ella's body before slowly dragging her into the lake. In the end, the surviving Ella returned home, but no one knew which Ella had indeed won. All that was certain was that the victorious Ella carried a secret about the black brick, one she could never tell anyone. This concludes with the recap. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.